Well, there was a time when cell phones were just, well, cell phones. That seems a long time ago, relatively speaking. Now they're cameras, music players, mini game consoles, internet browsers. But that's not the limit. There's some technology that's now being added to cell phones that opens up a whole new slew of possible applications. Jesse Hurst joins us with more on that. Okay, cell phones. I mean, we've talked about this before. Uh, what else can they do with the help I gather of barcodes? Well, it's almost as if the cell phone's a magic wand that can mm. unlock information about a product or even a place in terms of a, a shopping area or a museum. And the way it works is there's two different types of models. One uses the camera on a phone mm -hmm. where you sort of take a photo of the barcode and software on the phone translates that into information that's embedded in that barcode. The other is to use radio frequency tags, which is literally like a broadcast. You sort of wave it at the object, and any information on the object is transferred to your phone. So if we just were to turn that into a practical example, you're house hunting. You drive by, you see a for sale sign. So presumably, if this were all in place, you could put up your, your cell phone and get, what, detailed information and specs on the house, the whole works? Absolutely. You'd have the listing. In theory, you could have the building inspection. You could have the history of the house. You could have history of the neighborhood. All, And this is a way, really, to have have a lot of info accessible in a timely manner on a device we assume is in our pocket. So, wow. you know, another example being used in Japan are billboards, mm -hmm. where billboards obviously are limited in terms of the message they can convey, right. but consumers can point their phone at the billboard and download additional information about the product or service, sort of bookmarking it so later on if they want to look it up or actually go and buy it, they have the info. I have to think that retailers might, might just be doing cartwheels with glee over this, right? I mean, it must be a perfect tool for them to move a lot more information well I would say actually it's a bit of a double-edged sword oh, on the okay. one hand yes it does help both you know advertisers convey a lot more useful information and shoppers when they're going to be alerted of deals let's say and sales the flip side of this though is bargain hunting let's say you're in a store and you look at a product right. you can use this technology to check the price with all other retailers you can look at consumer reviews to see if this is actually a good product and worth your buy so I think on the one hand it does empower consumers to actually make a more informed buy. Retailers need to be careful that their competitors are not using the same technology to undercut their price. No, it's true. It does make comparative shopping a whole lot easier. So we've often talked before about whenever there's access to information. Uh, again, the double-edged side of the equation is privacy issues. Are there any privacy issues that come uh, come to mind for you? Well, there's quite a lot of privacy issues, and that's why this technology really hasn't proliferated to the extent that it should. Mm -hmm. And one of them, if you imagine you're buying all these products that broadcast information about themselves, what's to stop a marketer, or even worse, a thief, driving in neighborhoods and inventorying what's in people's houses? If all your products are broadcasting this information, I could just walk up to your house, do a scan, see all the records you've bought, the clothes you've bought, and then knock on the door, and I know what your interests I are. I think there has to be some refinement <laughs> here, doesn't there? Well, you can see the potential <laughs> yeah. for abuse is large, sure. so I think that's why there's privacy concerns. So having said that, you say that some of this technology is already in place and in use in Japan. Any idea of how, how long it would take before it would get to Canada? Well, the technology exists in the cell phones. Mm -hmm. It's really more of the cultural use. There are people in the United States who are using this almost on a gimmick level, but I think it's really the retailers who have to push it. Once they start making the information available, most people realize their phones can access it and they will. Okay, very interesting. Thanks, Jesse. Thank you.